Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of No Huddle with Zach Arnd. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Iowa Hawkeyes giving a preview for this upcoming 2022 college football season led by head coach Kirk Ferentz going in the year 24 with offensive coordinator Brian Ferentz and defensive coordinator Phil Parker. Iowa, this is a team that made the Big Ten Championship a year ago, had yet another 10-win season under Kirk Ferentz, looking to bounce back with another 10-win season this season. Some key players returning, linebacker Jack Campbell, one of the best in the country. He also led the nation with 143 tackles in 14 games a year ago. Sam Laporta, the tight end. Here's a guy who was high on some draft boards after last season. He decided to come back. A season ago, he had 670 receiving yards on 53 catches. They also have Torrey Taylor, the outstanding punter, returning. The only reason I'm mentioning him, he was one of the best punters in the country last year. He averaged 46 yards per punt and ranked second nationally with 80 punts total on the season. Key losses. They lost one of the best centers in recent memory, Tyler Linderbaum, the Remington Trophy winner, All-American. He was a unanimous All-American, and he was a high, very high draft pick for a center. Tyler Goodson, the three-year starter at running back, ran for 1,100 yards and six touchdowns a year ago. Caleb Schudick, a kicker, another special teams guy. He went 24 for 28 on field goals and scored 108 total points a year ago. Iowa had one of the best special teams last season. Looking at some of their 2022 recruits, they went out and signed two four-stars, Xavier Nwamka and Aaron Graves, both on the defensive side of the ball. On offense this season, Keegan Johnson and Nico Ragony returning at wide receiver, along with Jackson Rittler and Ar Arlen Bruce to make up the receiver room. They usually only use two wide receivers in a formation. Sometimes you'll see two with a tight end or two with multiple running backs. Offensive line, Tyler Ellsbury is set to replace Linderbaum at center. Justin Britt's going to step in at left guard. Looks like Mason Richmond, Connor Colby, and Jack Plum all return at left tackle, right guard, and right tackle. You also have Nick DeJong that can step in somewhere. He's a returning player from a season ago. I mentioned the tight end Sam Laporta. They also have Luke Lakey. Both of them probably going to be on the field a lot together. Spencer Petras, quarterback just a year ago, threw for 1,800 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. Remember, Iowa, they're not an explosive offense. They play their style of football, and they stick to it. Not a lot of deep shots, even though they did take a pretty deep shot against Michigan last year in the Big Ten Championship, if you remember that. But, yeah, they like to run the ball, give it to their fullback, running backs, short passes to the tight end. Speaking of the running backs, it's going to be Gavin Williams and LaShawn Williams in the backfield. At fullback, Monte Potterbaum and Turner Palisard. Defense, this is where Iowa is always very strong. They always have one of the best defenses in the country. They're usually up there in interceptions for a team. John Wagner, Noah Shannon, Logan Lee, Joe Evans, and Deontay Craig. Probably going to be the five rotational guys in the defensive line room. Three of those guys are returning starters. Yeha Black, Lucas Van Ness, and Max Lulin also make up the defensive line room. Linebacker, Justin Jacobs, Jack Campbell, and Seth Benson make up that room. They call their linebacker Leo. That's what Justin Jacobs is going to be playing this year. Then Jack Campbell, obviously, he's their middle linebacker. Jamari Harris, Riley Moss, Kavion Merriweather, and Quinn Shuttle. Make up the DB room. Riley Moss, one of the best players in the country. One of the better overall secondary players we've seen over the last five to six years. He was up there. I don't know if he led the team in interceptions, but he was definitely up there in the nation these last couple of years. Now that I'm looking at it, it says Dane Belton. He led the team in interceptions with five a year ago. Sticking with the secondary. Xavier Nwamka, the four-star recruit that they got, he's going to be a freshman this year. I wouldn't be surprised if you see him on the field just because he's that talented. Looking at some team stats, they were 120th in offensive efficiency, but 16th in defense, 119th offensive explosive plays, but they only allowed the sixth best 
on defense in terms of explosive plays. Finishing drives, they ranked 118th on offense. Turnover margin, they were plus 11, one of the best in the country. They ranked 12th. They only ranked inside the top 100 for an offensive stat, which was points per game, and they ranked 99th at 23.4 points per game. Defense, they ranked top 15 in scoring defense and rushing defense. Total defense, they only allowed 320 yards per game, which was good for 17th. Then the 42nd best passing defense at 214 yards per game. Those stats were good for a 10 and 4 season, 7 and 2 in the Big Ten. They lost a thrilling game against Kentucky in the Citrus Bowl. Looking ahead to 2022, I have Iowa starting out 4 0 with wins over South Dakota State, Iowa State, Nevada, and at Rutgers. I think they'll lose to Michigan. Again, they lost to them in the Big Ten Championship. That game really wasn't competitive. This one could be, but I still have Michigan coming out on top. At Illinois, that should be an easy win for Iowa. The contract of Styles, I think, is going to be in Iowa's favor. At Ohio State, Iowa has a great pass defense. They've always given Ohio State trouble, but it's at Ohio State, so I'm going to have to go with the Buckeyes here. Northwestern and Purdue should be easy, somewhat easy wins for Iowa. Wisconsin, just like the Michigan game, Michigan game last year, contrast in styles. Is not in play here. These teams both like to pound the football. Both like to run it. Very physical on the line of scrimmage. Don't like to throw it all over the field. Wisconsin, they do that a little bit better than Iowa, so I have Wisconsin winning that. At Minnesota, I think Iowa's going to go on the road and win there. Along with defending home field, last game of the season against Nebraska. Putting them at 9-3 and in Kirk Ferentz's 24th season with Iowa. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you all have a great day. I'll catch you in the next one.